Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and last Christmas I did a video detailing every smartphone I've ever used. And today we're following that up by rating every smartphone I've ever used. So essentially, I'm gonna just be looking and talking about every smartphone I've ever owned or, you know, used personally, because I've owned a lot of phones for review, and just rating them on how I liked them at the time. Obviously, if I had to just rate them straight up, my current iPhone 12 is gonna be the best, right? But instead, we're just gonna rate each one on how I liked did. I recommend you watch that old video first if you haven't already, but just in case, let's start with a quick rundown of what phones I've owned. I first got the HTC Wildfire S in 2011 when I would have been 11 years old. It was a very cheap phone even for the time and kind of sucked, but hey, it did the job. Next, I got the iPhone 4 in 2013 from my uncle for free, actually, and that was a huge step up for me. It was actually the subject of my first ever tech video, interesting fact. From there, I bought the iPhone 5C after working over the summer of 2014. And while the 5C itself was kind of a mess, I actually really loved that phone. It was great. Obviously, it didn't sell as well as Apple was hoping, but I really liked the phone. I did, however, upgrade the June of 2015 to the iPod 6 generation. Technically not a phone, but I didn't have a sell plan at this point anyway, so I thought it'd be an improvement over the iPhone 5C. It kind of was, but eh, not by much. It worked fine for me until late 2016 when I got my iPhone 6 and finally had a bigger display. But that phone just didn't cut it, so I got the iPhone 6S soon after in early 2017, and now that phone was awesome. Finally, it felt like I had a phone that was genuinely fast. Well, the 5C had felt fast too, but not to the same extent. But YouTube around this point was starting to do better for me, so in late 2017, I bit the bullet and bought the brand new revolutionary iPhone 10, An amazing phone, and one that I absolutely loved. Skip to a year later, and I wanted to have a tradition of always having the best iPhone, so I got the iPhone 10s. A purchase I somewhat regret, honestly, as the phone felt exactly the same as my 10. But then a year ago, in 2019, I picked up the iPhone 11 Pro Max at launch, and that phone felt great. The battery life was a huge improvement, and it felt like a significant upgrade. Cut to 2020, and I broke tradition by not buying the best of the best in the 12 Pro, but I did get the iPhone 12 in blue, which is the phone I'm currently using. I'm gonna leave that phone out of this list, as it's just too early to say where it falls in comparison. Now obviously, I've had a lot of phones over the years, probably more than most people, and I think a big reason why is because I've always been a bit of a tech enthusiast, clearly. I mean, I have a YouTube channel based around it, but I tend to get bored if I have the same device for too long. But some of the phones I've had have definitely been better than others, so today we're gonna go through each of them and rate them from worst to best. Keep in mind, this is purely going off my experience with them. You might have had one of these phones, might have been at a different time, might have been at the same time, but this is just my opinion and how I felt when I was actually using them and as well as hindsight. So let's start with the worst smartphone I believe I've ever owned, the HTC Wildfire S. I know, my first one, but hey, it was a cheap phone even for the time. Look, maybe it's unfair to the wildfire to call it the worst, but it kind of was. Again, it was a budget smartphone when I got it, and to be honest, it was barely even a smartphone. The 3.2 inch 480p display and Android 2.3 just wasn't gonna cut it, and the terrible internal specs meant a slow experience from the get-go. This phone could barely play Angry Birds. Now that being said, I was like 11 years old when I first got this. My parents bought it for me as I was entering middle school. For a kid in 2011, having any kind of smartphone was amazing. I was one of the first of my friends to get one, and I was so glad I didn't have a flip phone like most kids who actually even had a phone my age. I thought it was so awesome for the time, and I did use it for over two years. So it did me well, but ultimately, it was a budget Android in the early days of Android, and I think that says everything that needs to be said. So if that's the worst, what's the second worst? Well, I have to go with the iPod Touch 6th generation. I know, I know, technically not a phone, but I actually used it for about a year and a half or so before, you know, getting the iPhone 6 because I wanted the bigger screen, as well as a phone that could, you know, actually have a plan. When I think of that old iPod, I think of the terrible, painful battery life. It didn't help that I mainly used it jailbroken, but those iPods have such tiny batteries. It kills me that Apple hasn't even changed it with the 7th gen iPod, that they're still somehow selling for like 200 bucks. But when I got the iPod in 2015, it did seem like a good deal. $200 for the same chipset as the iPhone 6, which would be a good upgrade over my iPhone 5C with the A6. But the truth was, the performance wasn't much better, mostly thanks to the same amount of RAM, and while in the long run it would have made a difference as the iPod 6 got to iOS 12, I kind of upgraded too soon for that to matter. The device was thin though, like crazy thin, in fact almost too thin. I like my phone to feel like it has at least a little bit of substance to it, and the iPod did not fulfill that. Overall, it was a fine device and it did the job for me. I just feel like uh, mainly that battery life really dragged it down, and I really should have just stuck with the iPhone 5C. Alright, third worst phone. Uh, for this one I had to go 
go with the iPhone XS. Not because it's a bad phone. In fact, when I had it, it was the best on the market. Best iPhone, at least, but I felt disappointed with it. For a month before the iPhone XS launched, I actually used an iPhone 8 Plus. Going to the 8 Plus for my 10 was really interesting. I liked the bigger screen, missed the OLED, but what I really loved was the significantly better battery life. It blew me away just how much longer it lasted, and to go from that to the smaller XS was a huge downgrade in that department. The iPhone 10 was never good with battery life, but it was easy to excuse, as my older iPhones had all been pretty mediocre at best anyways, and the 10 was the first iPhone to have OLED, thus it makes sense the battery would drain faster, but the XS was a year newer and just didn't have the same excuse, and not even lasting me a day at times was just unacceptable. In hindsight, I should have paid the extra money to get the XS Max, it was bigger which I think I would have liked and the battery would have been a bit better, but regardless with the power of hindsight, the iPhone XS is fairly low on my list of phones, thanks to just how small of an upgrade it was from the iPhone X. And fourth on the list, and we're starting to get to uh, mediocre okay territory, I have to go with my iPhone 6. At most, I only had it about six months, if even that, and I liked it. It was bigger than my iPod Touch, which I definitely liked. It was very thin and light, while still feeling like an actual phone, which was nice. And I just really enjoyed making the jump to the bigger phone from the pretty small iPod. At the time, I had felt like that iPod was falling behind. Big screens had been on iPhone since 2014, and yet there I was, two years later, still on a 4-inch display. The iPhone 6 did the job for me, at least for the time I had it, and it did it pretty well, so I don't have too many complaints. In fact, after I got the 6S, I actually sold the iPhone 6 for more than I bought it for, so uh, the phone truly was a net positive. Next up, we're starting to get to the good phones. I have to go with the iPhone 4. Now, the iPhone 4 for me was really good. Um, it wasn't great, but it was really good. It was already getting slow in 2013, but it was still fairly current and could do pretty much anything. Any game I wanted to play or any app I wanted to download was doable. I liked it quite a bit. It was such an upgrade over that terrible wildfire, and even better, my uncle gave it to me for free because he had gotten something better. The iPhone 4 was my first taste of the Apple life, and I really liked it. This is actually the same iPhone 4 I had back in the day on the screen now. It's lived a long life, and even now, it still sometimes serves as an iPod for my mom with an old docking station. And then there was the second taste of my Apple life, the iPhone 5C. Yeah, I know, pretty high up on the list considering it's also what I considered to be the worst iPhone of all time. But hey, I actually really loved it. This for a long time would be the newest phone I'd own. I got it only a year after it came out in 2014, or actually less than a year. I remember buying it refurbished off eBay for actually a pretty good deal, and it was a big upgrade over the iPhone 4. The iPhone 4 wasn't completely obsolete yet, but the 5C was much better, being three years newer and having way better specs, as well as the bigger display. This isn't the actual phone I have, though it looked the same in blue. While this phone was only a year old, that can be a little bit deceptive, as it had the same specs as the, at the time, two-year-old iPhone 5, although that as well would have been a big upgrade over the iPhone 4. But of course, the 5C was colorful and plastic, and you know what? I loved that about it. I thought the blue was awesome, and it was definitely a phone that stood out from the crowd, for better or for worse. I used it a full year before getting the iPod 6 and selling the 5C to a friend of mine, which he proceeded to accidentally destroy while go-karting at his 16th birthday. Fun times! Regardless, I really liked the 5C. It was the first phone I bought myself, so I'll always have a lot of love for it, and it also wasn't really too old when I got it, which made it a pretty pleasant experience. Now we're getting to the top three smartphones I've ever used, of course, in my opinion and my personal experience. While I did really enjoy the 5C and the iPhone 4, I have to put the iPhone 6S above both of them. I only used it for six months or so, but it felt like a major upgrade over the iPhone 6, and to be fair, it was. It might have been nearly two years old in 2017, but it was my first taste of having a truly great camera on a phone. Filming video in 4K? Are you kidding me? I used it to film YouTube videos quite a lot throughout the year and got some great photos that to this day I still really like. I also thought 3D Touch was the coolest darn thing, may it rest in peace. Live photos was also something I found super cool. My youngest brother was born back in 2016, so getting photos of him that could show a few seconds of movement is something I really appreciate looking back. The phone also felt quite a bit sturdier than the iPhone 6, and I mean it was. Oh, and of course, 
course, the second generation Touch ID was insanely fast compared to the first gen. You'd barely touch the home button and you'd be in. Now this phone here isn't the one I had. That one actually went to my, at the time, 14 year old brother after I got my iPhone 10. And eventually, quite recently, he upgraded to the iPhone 10R and the success went to a younger cousin of mine. So the phone is still living a good life getting used and thanks to a battery replacement a while back, it's still going strong. It's amazing that despite the fact that it's five years old, it still feels completely usable on iOS 14. It's not slow, it can do basically anything. Heck, the phone is definitely better now than my iPhone 4 was in 2013, and that phone was only three years old. I liked the 6S a lot, but it was nothing compared to the phone I would get next. But as many of you might have guessed, uh, there's one other phone I have to talk about first. The iPhone 11 Pro. For the first time since buying the iPhone 10, the iPhone 11 Pro Max provided me with an experience that felt like a real upgrade. Battery life went from bad to amazing. I could go multiple days, no problem on the 11 Pro, something I had never even dreamt of doing beforehand. The 11 Pro also just had amazing cameras, completely blowing away anything I'd had before. And the design, oh how I love the design. The frosted glass not only feels terrific in the hand, but it also looks spectacular. And the centered Apple logo and midnight green color only adds to the aesthetic. This is one of my favorite iPhones of all time. I'm glad I opted for the bigger screen. It's really worked for me. Although I think I do like the slightly smaller compromise I get with the iPhone 12. The 11 Pro felt like a flagship, and even though it was very expensive, I have to say it was worth the money. I really enjoyed it, and actually did a video recently talking about why Apple discontinued it so recently, and I'll uh, link that video in the description below if you're interested. But now to my favorite iPhone of all time, without a doubt, the iPhone 10. The iPhone 10 was my first taste of a flagship experience, and what a taste it was, bringing me straight into the future. While now the notch might feel dated for some people compared to Androids, at the time, the iPhone 10 was one of the best in the game, and it felt like it. Even now, it still feels like it. It looks great, it was fast, it had a great camera, the design was awesome, and heralded back to the iPhone 4 and 4S. That's actually why I got it in the silver color. It really reminded me of the white iPhone 4. And the OLED screen was so much better than anything Apple had ever used. It wasn't quite the jump that the Retina was with the iPhone 4, but it was still a jump, and it was about time Apple had gotten on board the OLED train. I was so, so excited to get the iPhone 10, and I remember always just feeling so proud whenever someone at school realized I had the new iPhone 10 and wanted to try it. From emoji to face ID to the lack of bezels to the design, the iPhone 10 felt perfect to me. Excuse the crappy, terrible webcam footage. Uh, I finished filming a couple days ago and I just wanted to add this part in. Ignore all the dog toys in the background, I'll get to that in a little bit. But there's another reason that the iPhone 10 was so important to me. It marks the start of my commitment to YouTube. The summer before, in 2017, I had worked at a warehouse, as I did most summers. It was a hard labor job where I had to lug around car parts for eight hours a day. Not exactly fun. I got my license and I bought a car. I was ready to start finding a part-time job to do throughout my grad year of high school, but something changed while I was working over that summer. I was slaving away to make minimum wage, and yet at the same time, at the end of every month, I was getting a couple extra hundred bucks from YouTube, despite the fact I hadn't made a video in months at the time. I also only had like 5,000 subscribers on YouTube maybe. A couple hundred bucks might not sound like a ton of money, but when you're not making very much in the first place, it means a lot. Plus, I was getting it for free, basically. I was doing nothing at the time uh, besides, you know, working a different job, so that was awesome. So I made the difficult decision uh, that instead of getting a proper job, I would instead try YouTube out. Give it a proper shot. I had no idea what I was doing, if it would pan out or if it would crash and burn and just be a waste of time. But to truly commit, I bought the iPhone 10 at launch brand new. Smartphones were my focus, so I wanted to have the best I could. Spending over a thousand dollars on a smartphone was brutal. And keep in mind, I didn't get a plan with it. So I just paid a thousand bucks straight up plus tax and it was in Canadian dollars, so even more. But all in all, you know, I think it was a decent decision in the long run. <laughs> By Christmas of that year, I had about 10,000 subscribers. And a year and a half later in the May of 2019, I hit a hundred thousand. Fast forward another year and a half. And uh, here we are at the end of 2020 and I have over 200,000. YouTube is my job. I dropped out of university for this. This is it. This is my career at this point. I have no idea what the future holds, but it's been a heck of a ride, so thanks for sticking around. Whether you subscribed to me three minutes ago or three years ago, I really do appreciate that you're here. You're the reason I'm able to basically live the dream, being a YouTuber. I would fantasize about being a YouTuber when I was like, 
13, 14 years old. I thought that would be the coolest job. And yet, uh, somehow I'm here being a YouTuber and it's crazy. And I might not be, you know, a huge YouTuber on the platform, but 200,000 subscribers is enough to make a living off of. And I just can't thank you guys enough. And you know, you're all the reason I've accomplished so much in my life already. I'm uh, 20 years old right now. At 19, I moved out of my parents' house to my own apartment here. I got a super sweet Mustang that I absolutely love. And more recently, I got a puppy. I've always wanted a dog. And so I finally got a puppy who you can see there and it's awesome. But enough for me, uh, let's get back to my past self when I introduce Cola, my, uh, my puppy. <laughs> this is Cola and she's the sweetest pupper you'll ever meet. She's a long hair mini dash hound and uh, yeah, she's actually recessive long hair, which means both of her parents were short hair dash hounds, kind of interesting. But yeah, she's she's so sweet. Um, I gave her the name Cola because her colors, black and brown, remind me of Coca-Cola for whatever reason. Also, her mom's name was Nola and her sister's name is Lola, so they all rhyme, kind of funny. But seriously, I've wanted a dog forever, and while this has nothing to do with um, phones, <laughs> she's super cute, and I just wanted to throw her in here at the end as she, you know, eats my drawstring there. At some point, I'll have to do some kind of actual video with her. I have no idea what, but you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> but that's why I actually haven't shown my, my face too much in this video, is she doesn't like to be alone for very long, so it's kind of hard to get any filming in. But getting back to phones, what the title promised, I've had a lot of phones over the years, and my life has changed a lot over the years, as it does. And it's funny how I can relate certain parts of my life to the phone I had. I th when I think of my grad year in high school, I think of my iPhone 10 because that's what I used, and everybody thought it was super cool because, you know, the iPhone 10 was new at the time and no one else had it yet. When I think of the semester of university I took, I had my iPhone 10s, which is probably part of the reason I don't like my 10s a ton in hindsight is because I associate it with, you know, very difficult, hard university work. I had seven courses and it was insane, and while I managed to pass them all, uh, it was a lot of work. And of course, I would go on to drop out and do YouTube for a living, which uh, I think was a good decision in hindsight. I was going for a computer science degree, by the way. Um, I'm not opposed to possibly going to school in the future and doing some stuff, but right now I'm just kind of going with YouTube and seeing what happens, right? I was in a super strange situation where I was in school and I had friends there, but I also had over 100,000 subscribers and I couldn't get any work done because I was so busy and I was always doing homework and I was making more than enough money to make a living. So for me, it just made sense to drop out. Obviously for most people, I don't ever recommend dropping out of school. School's great, uh, including if you want to be a YouTuber. I had 100,000 subscribers already. Unless you're at that point and you're making already enough money to live on, you shouldn't drop out of school. That's that's my opinion anyway. But uh, 2020 has been a pretty crazy year. So this this was my full full year, first full year of just doing YouTube. I moved out of my parents' house in January, so I've been completely on my own. Uh, well, I had a roommate for the first few months, but he moved out pretty quick. And it's been fun, but weird. I mean, 2020 in general has been a pretty terrible year for a lot of people. For me, it's been okay. You know, uh, the whole quarantine thing has worked worked out really well with my job actually being, you know, self-employed at home. Uh, it's been, it's, it sucked not to get together with friends. Uh, that, that's really, really sucked. But you know, online, at least with Discord and stuff, you can talk with them and play games with them. Hopefully 2021 will be better for all of us, for you, for me. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the new year. Excited to see what it brings and uh, very happy to have this pupper with me. But regardless of what comes next, uh, I hope that you have a very happy new year and I'll still be here making videos for as long as I possibly can. So thank you you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech. If you haven't subscribed already, you should do that maybe. And uh, go follow me on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech. I've been posting lots of pictures of Cola on my Instagram, especially because she's so darn cute. But with that, again, thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year. Again, I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and this is Cola from 91 Tech, and we will see you all in the next one.